When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. This is Prime, an online service of prayer and praise for and from the City Road Chapel, the United Methodist Church, located in Madison, Tennessee. Beginning this week on April 5th, 2020, we celebrate Holy Week, following Jesus as he journeys to Jerusalem, his arrest, trial, and crucifixion, culminating in his resurrection. Today, we look at Christ's triumphal entry into the city, what we call Palm Sunday, and walk with him through his arrest and conviction. Hosanna, loud Hosanna. Almighty God, today we journey with Jesus, from the cheers of the crowd to the cries calling for his death. Grant that we who follow in his footsteps know the love that he offers in his sacrifice, and help us know that death is not the end of the story, but just another step on the way to the glorious victory of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. The City Road Chapel United Methodist Church is a faith community located in Madison, Tennessee, whose mission is to grow in Christ and share God's love. We are men and women, old and young, committed to Christ's call to grow in our love of God and love of neighbor. We do that through worship, prayer, study, and service to our community. We want to connect with you, and we encourage you to visit our website at cityroadchapel.org for the latest information on what is happening with our church, to share your prayer requests, and to make donations to our work. Our ministry is dependent on the gifts of those who support what we're doing in Madison. If you would like to make a gift to the work of City Road Chapel, please visit cityroadchapel.org give to make your online donation. We are a 501c3 nonprofit, and all gifts are tax deductible. If you have a pastoral need, we hope that you'll reach out to our pastor, Jay Voorhees, at jvoorhees at cityroadchapel.org or by calling the church office at 615-868-1673. The City Road Chapel United Methodist Church has been a proud part of the Madison community for over 100 years, and we are committed to sharing God's light and love in this place for many years to come.
The story continues as shared from Matthew's Gospel. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people gathered in the palace of the high priest, who was called Caiaphas, and they conspired to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. Then one of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I betray him to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver. And from that moment, he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. After several days, Judas arrived with a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you're here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. When the morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, Will you say so? But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner, called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Who do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let, Let him, him be crucified. crucified. Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let, Let him, him be crucified. crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His, his blood, blood be on, on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Take a few moments to reflect on Jesus' journey into Jerusalem, leading to his death on a cross. How quickly the cheers of the crowds could turn into the jeers calling for his crucifixion. What was it about Jesus that made the religious leaders so fearful? 
Why would his friend Judas choose to betray him with a kiss? How does this story of Jesus' death intersect with your own life story? It is amazing how fast things can change, isn't it? We think things are going along really well and everything is going great and then something happens and suddenly what we thought was black is now white and what we thought was up is now down and we find ourselves thinking that something that was good might actually be bad now. And currently, our situation should make us aware of that. A month ago, our biggest concern was whether Bernie or Joe would be the Democratic Party nominee. The news was just coming out about the coronavirus. March 1st was the first reported case, and now we have over 200,000 cases and 4,000 people dead in the country. And just a month ago, we were talking about how great an economy we had. And now, as of today, some six million people have filed for unemployment. And some economists are even saying we might be headed for a depression. So things change quickly, don't they? And that's what happened in Jesus' life during this time that we remember this, this week, this holy week. We remember that Jesus had this experience where everything started off so well. He had a grand parade as he rode into the city of Jerusalem and, and crowds cheered and waved palm branches and throw their coats on the road because they believed that the one who was coming to rule, who would kick out the oppressors, was coming back to power. And their hopes and dreams for a new world were invested in this simple man on a donkey. They were excited, they were pumped, they were ready to make this man their king. But then things changed. He didn't work out the way that they thought he would. They thought he was gonna ride into the castle and deal with the evil governor. Instead, he went to the temple and he confronted their hypocrisy. They expected that Jesus was going to cooperate with church leaders. Instead, he told stories about them and he condemned them for their unfaithfulness. They had expectations that the Messiah would be powerful and strong, putting people in their places and ruling with an iron fist. And instead, he came as a suffering servant, called to give rather than to take. And things changed where once they had been ready to welcome Jesus on the red carpet and wave palm branches to welcome him as the latest media darling, three days later they find themselves on the road to the city dump, shouting, crucify him, as he stumbles along the road. Yep, change happens. And people, both them back then and us today, well, we can be swayed by the smallest of things, can't we? So we sit here today in the shadow of Easter, and it's easy in this moment, a couple thousand years later, to think that this movement from the palms, from the celebration to the passion, that is his arrest and conviction and crucifixion, that we wouldn't have done that. I would have done that. And we look back to that time we want to assign blame to somebody, the Jews or the Romans, and somehow we think that we are better than those crowds who lined the roads 2,000 years ago. And yet, do we really accept the radical pronouncements of Jesus? Do we really? 
Do we really love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us? When was the last time you sold all your possessions to give everything to the poor? And Jesus says he's found among the hungry and the naked and the sick and in prison. But we walk by the least of these in the kingdom and somehow think that they can't be the neighbors that Jesus wanted us to love. We want a Jesus who conforms to our image, a Messiah uh, who is who we think he should be and acts like he should act. And when he doesn't, we can find ourselves like Peter before us, weeping as the rooster crows in the face of our denial. Now, if we were gathering this morning at City Road Chapel, there'd be a time in our service when we would march up to the rail and get on our knees and we'd share in the feast that we call communion. And it's a feast that Jesus gave us. He gathered with his disciples for the last meal before uh, his death and he broke bread and shared wine as a way of remembering what he was about to do. And I think Jesus knew that these persons that he called friends were going to turn and run when persecution came. I think he knew that they would abandon him and they would leave him to die alone on the cross. And yet he loved them so much he wanted to leave them with a party. After I'm gone, break bread and raise the cup as a way of remembering me. I know you're going to deny me, but I love you still. So hold parties in my name, remembering what I've taught you and reminding you of who I am. Friends, I think we, if we're honest, like the people on the road to Jerusalem, have moved from the celebration of the palms to the passion. I think that our cheers have been turned to jeers at times in our unfaithfulness to the gospel of Jesus Christ. But the good news is that Jesus has not given up on us. He's headed to the cross, he's loving us all the way there, and he's prepared to turn everything we know upside down, giving us joy in the midst of our sorrow, hope in the midst of our despair, life in the midst of death. Friends, we come on this Palm to Passion Sunday, remembering that Jesus is going to die, and we'll remember that this week, but always with the expectation that he's going to turn things upside down. Resurrection is coming and is ever before us, and may we carry that knowledge with us wherever we go. love is this, O oh, my soul, O oh, my soul. What wondrous love is this, O oh, my soul. What wondrous love is this that caused the Lord of bliss to bear the dreadful curse for my soul, for my soul, to bear the dreadful curse for my soul. God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. Hi there, City Road family. It's so good to be with you this morning. I hope you all are doing well and staying safe. Please stay at home and try to keep everybody safe. Uh, we have pretty well closed down everything at the church, uh, and we have signs up on the doors that says that we're closed because we care. And that's the case. We want everybody to be healthy, everybody to be safe. Let's see if we can't flatten this curve and get this, get through this thing. It's a rough time, and I hope really soon we can be back together, but probably not uh, until the end of April. One announcement I do want to make, I know next Sunday would be our normal Easter Sunday, and churches are doing all sorts of different ways of trying to deal with Easter Sunday. I will do, we'll still do a video worship like we've been doing, but when we get back together, whenever that is, in May or, or June, whenever we're finally back together as a body, we're going to have an Easter celebration as our gathering, our first gathering back. So uh, know that you will get Easter in some form. It just may not be on the normal day. And so I hope that um, I hope that's okay with you. Let's talk a little bit about what's going to happen this week. Um, I am going to 
put something up for Good Friday, it's going to be based around the seven last words. And it will just really kind of be a devotional kind of experience for you to reflect and meditate and almost a guided meditation on the seven last words of Jesus Christ as he was on the cross. So I invite you to check that out. It will be fairly simple, but uh, self-explanatory and self-guided. So I hope that you all will do that. Uh, just want to remind you, please continue to go to our website, cityroadchapel.org. Um, we have all of our updates, all of our information about what's going on in the church. Uh, of course, we have our videos and our podcast page. I encourage you to go check those out. Um, if you've not checked out the podcast, if you just go to cityroadchapel.org slash podcast, uh, you can hear our latest series, Attending to the Ordinances. You're sitting at home anyway, so why not listen to a podcast and see if it can't help you uh, in your own devotional and spiritual life. Um, I want to take uh, also a minute just to thank everybody for the, the great faithfulness uh, you've shown in your giving. We're doing pretty good financially, as you might imagine, because there's not an offering plate passing. Um, some folks, it's, it's easy to forget. Just a reminder that you can give online, uh, cityroadchapel.org slash give, and many of you have started picking up on that. And uh, it really is an easy way to give. It's pretty secure, and I, I hope that'll be helpful for you. Um, so if you could make a gift to the church, we would certainly appreciate it. The bills continue on. The building's still there. And although we've got pretty much everything shut down, there are still expenses. So we would uh, really appreciate your gift. Um, moving on to our joys and concerns, there are just a few that I'm going to share. Of course, you can go to our prayers page, uh, cityroadchapel.org slash prayers. Uh, and you can leave a request there too, but there are just a few that I want to lift up this morning. Uh, first of all, I want to lift up uh, Charles Woodall. Charles is in Skyline Hospital. Uh, because he can't have any visitors at Skyline, of course, he's pretty much alone. Uh, my understanding is he's having a really hard time, and they're not sure what's going to happen with him or where he will go after he leaves Skyline. But if you would pray for Charles, um, that he finds peace in the midst of all of this, that would be great. As you might imagine, Ruth is also struggling because of just caregiving and trying to be able to do that by phone. She also has had a couple of uh, skin cancer um, lesions that have had to be taken off this week. And so we want to pray for her as they, this family uh, just tries to make it through in a really difficult time. James Dwyer, who is Margaret Dwyer's, uh, Margaret's son, is at um, Skyline as well. It, he was in critical condition. I think he's in a regular room now, but if you would uh, pray for him. We, of course, want to pray for all of our medical professionals, everybody that's working to try to bring forth healing in the midst of this uh, outbreak. And it's a really tough time. And if there are any things, any practical things or that you think we can do to help our medical professionals, uh, please let me know. It would be kind of nice. We might want to think about sending over lunch or, or dinner for the emergency room staff uh, over at Skyline, or uh, there are just a number of ways that we could help. So let's think about that together, how we can continue to support our medical professionals through all of this. Also, we got word that James Story, he's a music director up at Gallatin First, is in the hospital, is in pretty serious condition, and we want to pray for him as well. Um, I'm sure there are other prayer concerns we need to lift up. Those are the ones that I have off the top of my heart and I wanted to lift up today. Uh, if you would, let's bow in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we come into your presence. Lord, we know that this Palm Sunday is a day of celebration, but we know we're moving towards the cross. And it's a heavy week. So God, we ask for your grace, your love, your presence. And help us to remember in the midst of it all that your resurrection is coming. Lord, we thank you that death is not the end of the story, but that Jesus is bringing forth life as well. Lord God, we ask that you be with all of those who are sick, that you watch over them, that you bring forth healing. Lord, we ask that you be with the medical professionals, the healers that you have called to bring forth healing, that they will know your love and grace and keep them safe in the midst of all of this. Lord, we're still trying to figure out how to live in this different time. And in the midst of it all, help us to keep our eyes focused on you. 
that we will know your love and your grace. And so, Lord, we come today remembering Jesus and his sacrifice, bowing before him as our Lord, and asking that he and you continue to be present for us. We pray this in his name, praying together the words that he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now, my friends, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm and the rain fall soft. And until we meet again, may God keep you close to Him. Yes, may God hold you in the palm of his hand.